are here in Finland and this is my dear friend Mari Rossi. She's a math teacher and we are going to talk about teaching math precisely. So Marit, um, would you introduce yourself? Uh, how is that that you became a teacher and uh, what is that that you do or have been doing for the last years? So uh, I studied mathematics and I was not actually very good in mathematics, but it always interested me. And uh, I became a math teacher and I have been a math teacher over 30 years. And then also I have been a principal about 15 years. And during those years I also published and I'm an author of nine math books. And uh, what changes my teaching totally was when I visited UK. It was uh, 1990. And, uh, then I believe that I have taught my students totally wrong because they put me in the situation with, the, with their professors, some new problem which we have to solve and I noticed that they have the same problems than me and we really have to build the knowledge of ourselves. So it was not easy to understand without taking part of the whole process yourself. And after that actually started my, my writings and then I get 2006, I get a Fulbright to the United States. And then we started to do Bath to Math e-learning material. And now I'm retired, but at the same time, I'm still continuing uh, teaching children. And I'm like an entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> so great. And uh, something that was you know, like they're interesting to me, is when you told me that by the time that your kids came to your classes, which was secondary school mostly, uh, most of them uh, already hate math. And I, I would like to ask you, why do you think is so? And uh, how could we prevent this from happening? And if it already happened, if kids already hate math when they come to our classes as teachers how can we fix this so they can love math or at least not hate it so what do you think about that first i think that the math as a subject has changed least in 100 years the other subjects has developed and takes new things to the classroom so very typical lesson for the students is that they go to the classroom they look for the homework and then teacher is telling maybe with an example of the next thing what they have to learn and then they are repeating it and repeating it and repeating and very often there is no connection to the real world so there is no meaningful for them anymore it's like a teacher's math it's like a boring repeating mm -hmm. thing and I noticed when I when I got those children, I asked them, usually, draw a picture of your typical math lesson. And from those pictures, I could easily see that they are sitting alone. Maybe there's nobody else in the classroom. Uh, or if there is somebody in the classroom, they are in the rows. And in, in front of there, there is a teacher. So there is no communication between them. Mm -hmm. Probably there is no communication or very little with the teacher and the students and sometimes the drawings are very black. So you can also see from the drawings that they have their feelings very negative against them. Yes, emotions. Emotions. Mm -hmm. So it always has to be connected to the life, especially at that age. Okay. And another thing that you said that I also found very interesting is that you think that uh, the current methods for teaching math suit only about 5% of kids. This means that we are leaving behind 95% of our students because of the way we are teaching math. They, we are not getting to them because we are not engaging them into the math into the life of math. Yes. So, um, is there a way to change this? Can you give us some practical tips of how we can do this in our mm -hmm. classrooms? Mm -hmm. Engage a larger percentage of our students and mm -hmm. why not? Maybe why not all of them? 
<laughs> For example, I, I leave it to talk about this orientation. First, it's very important that the themes are near them. For example, why we don't dot, why we don't have an environmental things. They 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 know how important environmental things are. So you, it, it would be easy to to take a data about the environment of your own living area. Or if you don't have things, also when you are inside the classroom, you have to have something hands-on. Even when I have been teaching about children in high school, I have used balls when they are thinking about the connection, the, f the function between the what high you are dropping the ball and what is the high of the first when the, you catch the ball. Mm -hmm. and, and you can notice that you can modeling mathematics in different situations in the life. Okay, so the, the themes are important, the uh, activities are important, uh, connections to the outward are important. Maybe you also find things to go outside uh, collecting data. Not sitting in alone with the table and listening only to the teacher all the time. All yes. the time. This is this is like the key thing. Okay. Now you you published um, several textbooks for learning math, but now you have taken a new challenge, which is to integrate technology with the learning of math. And uh, Paths to Math has been born. Yes. And uh, I would love if you could tell us a little bit about Paths to Math. Uh, of course, this time when a lot of things are happening with electrical, I'm really afraid that we go like backwards in education again. That you put the student alone with the computer and they are repeating those boring things again. So this, this is an option to do something totally different. We have to understand that, that the children want to communicate with each other, they need also speaking. Of course, it's very good to put them sometimes to do works along with the computer. Mm -hmm. But what I'm afraid that that most of the programs are such that you are doing alone. And, yes. and I see that every children are different, we need different methods, so we are offering in Paths to Math what, what we believe that it, it has to be a rich and right environment for the children so that they are ready to handle also different kind of problems in the world when they grow up. If you are giving them only one narrow way, it's, I think it's quite obvious that they are not, not able to solve problems and, and they are not creative persons. Or, they, with the math, they can get so much tools for their life. So it's not only technology, it's also about social learning Abs of math. Absolutely. So we are really excited about the future and we try to find our way to the teachers uh, because the teachers are important and they are building the environment, but they need good tools. Yes, of course. Teachers matter and they need the most that we, they can get from society to uh, really engage our students. Now, what would you say to a new teacher, to a new math teacher? Just remember how you were yourself when you were starting mm -hmm. as a teacher. And you know that there are there's lots of fear, also mm -hmm. lots of excitement and enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. But um, many problems will come and, and it's not going to be an easy road. What would be your advice? I think the passion to teach is the most important. If you think about my story, I have I have been working to change the math education now 30 years, and I'm still going on. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think that's the most important, and, and I hope that they get mentoring from the colleagues, and, 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 and of course you have to think that is it, is it the best way how you have been taught your teachers, that can you find something what you find uh, more updated to this day and more supporting individual learners. If you are throwing the information, it probably don't even touch them mm -hmm. and then they get bored and it's not they are not involved in this the whole thing. So I think your own passion to your own work, I think it's number one. Yes, I agree with you. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Marit, for this interesting talk. Thank you. About teaching and about uh, math. Thank you, Elisa. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.